Howdy folks, Kiwi here, and welcome back to Stein's Gate, a safe space in which we be awesome, where we are, of course, accidentally biting our tongue part way through that intro. Damn it. Alright, so we're back. Um, I know that, and yet no words come. I just stand there, like a useless statue. The cause of Lukiko's tears is undoubtedly me. I didn't treat her right as my girlfriend, even if it was only a temporary arrangement. And now it ends with me watching as Lukiko cries. Lukiko. I'm the one who did this to her. I'm the cause of her grief. And yet... Thank you very much. She thanks me and bows her head. Eh? She lifts her head and smiles shyly through her tears. I was really happy, Sneef, <laughs> that we could be together. That's a lie. I'm glad I fell in love with you. That was a lie. That has to be a lie. No one loves me. To my surprise, Lukiko takes my hand in her tears. Takes my... Takes my... Takes my hand in her... Takes my hand in hers. Stop fucking interrupting me. Her hand is very warm and delicate. This is the first time I've touched her since we became a couple. And it will be the last. Lukiko places a note in my hand, and then she pulls away. She bows her head again. So Bye now. Lukiko turns her back to me, then disappears into the shrine office. I look at the note. There's a number written there. Probably her mother's pager number. She kept her promise. But I... I didn't keep mine. I can't let it end like this. I run full speed back to the lab, ignoring Kirisu's cry calls to stop. I slap on the headgear and leap to the past. Twice, not once. Though, maybe just once. We'll have to see momentarily. Oh, wait, yeah, here we go. We'll have to see momentarily. Do you go to the 11th, or... Oh, no, just the beginning of today. Okay. Well, earlier of today. I regain consciousness in front of Akihabara Station. Lukiko is next to me. We're about to board the train for Kamima. Lukiko looks a little anxious, but she doesn't raise a single complaint. The shuttle bus pulls up. The huge line of people begins to move. <clears throat> mm. Can't go to Kamima like this. Shaking off my time-induced vertigo, I take Lukiko by the hand. Uh, no. Um. Come on. Once we get <laughs> okay, once we get out of line, I let go of Lukio's hand and start walking. Okabe-san, the bus is here. We're not going to Kamima. I lied. Eh? <laughs> this time, we're doing things my way. They were your way. <laughs> Okabe-san, um, where are we going? Stop asking questions. I told you not to ask about them! Okabe-san? Okabe I keep walking with Lukiko's hand in mine, ignoring everything else. Lukiko looks bewildered at first, but eventually she says no more, and just starts following me with a sad expression. We arrive at Yanabayashi Shrine, a place devoid of visitors, where an aura of peace and dignity dominates. Where the cries of cicadas resound. Lukiko's home. Finally, I turn to face Lukiko. Instead of letting go, I grasp her warm hand even tighter than before. Nya. Perhaps it's the heat, or perhaps it's our nervousness, but our hands are damp sweat. Maybe it was all that running we just did. But still, I don't let go. Lukiko's hanging her head. I'd probably assuming I'm going to dump her and say, fuck off. She might cry at any moment. This means our relationship is over, doesn't it? Her lips tremble. Her voice trembles. Her body trembles. She is the definition of tremble in the dictionary now. I resummon my resolve and answer with a laugh. <laughs> what are you talking about? Eh? Our couple face isn't over yet. I strike a pose and mimic a line from a popular card battling anime. <laughs> It's time to duel. Until I witness Mary's death, this is how I acted all the time. 
Now it takes some effort, but I still have it in me. But I don't know Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Were you listening? This time we're doing things my way. Now, my disciple. Bring forth the demon sword, Samadare. <laughs> the wind blows. The tree growing over the main building rustles its leaves in response. Look, you go look at me blankly. <laughs> this isn't how you do dates, you stupid asshole. Tears form in the corner of her eyes. What? Isn't that obvious? It's time to continue your training in the Shishin Sanma School of Swordsmanship. My training. Have you already forgotten what I taught you? No, but Oka. Okay. It's Kyoma. Yeah. So, when did this happen? And why do I suddenly have an urge to kiss you so much? All over your face and body. Have you forgotten my true name, Lukiko? I am the insane mad scientist, Hoya in Koyama. Swallowing my embarrassment, I strike another pose. <laughs> like Johnny Bravo. I pull out a comb as well. I was so caught up in the question of your gender that I lost sight of our true relationship. But now, I finally realized the truth. Our relationship was decided from the very beginning. Decided how? You may be a man and you may be a woman, but our temporary relationship is a couple. I take a deep breath. I gently comb my hair with my comb through Lukiko's hair. I twist my lips into a grin. What is happening? Matters not. Ah. I'm Lu I am I. Lukiko is Lukiko. And Lukiko is my disciple. <laughs> As I gently stroke her hair, Lukiko puts her warm hand on top of mine. The tears collected in the corner of her eyes suddenly fall. Yes, of course, Okabe. I mean, Kyomasan is my master. Well said. Now, Lukiko, bring forth Samadar. <laughs> At once. Um, just a moment, I'll be right back. Please stay here, okay? Or you can follow me. I won't be changing. I'm not going anywhere, so hurry. <laughs> Lukiko reluctantly lets go of my hand. Shyly turns away from me and heads to the shrine office. At Mach 3! It's right there! That was very unnecessary. <laughs> and then they had a delightful day. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, I didn't realize how annoying those were. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, just... Just enjoy that silence for a second. Yeah. We spent four hours trying back into the saccade as we go. This is a pit. Just like we used to. Practice swings with the demon sword. Stories of the sword's history. Lectures on the intricacies of Shashin Zanma swordsmanship. All fabricated from my Shinubu delusions. I talk, Lukiko, dressed now in her Miko robes, listens with rapt attention. Occasionally we take a break, sit on the shrine stairway, she sits on my lap, and eat the street rice balls Lukiko's mother brings us. And that's how we spend an extraordinarily ordinary four hours. That's nice. Yes. Alright, that's it for today. Lukiko lowers her stance and slowly sheaths the demon sword Samadar. She looks so beautiful and majestic standing there in flowing white robes, sword shining in her hands. I find myself mesmerized once again. Lukiko bows, snapping me out of it. Thank you for today. It was very nice. I think I got a little stronger. No need for humility. Today you mastered one of the Shashin Zanma's secret style secrets. Type 32 Cherry Bomb. Fucking... Pff, okay. But don't get cocky, for you're still weak. <laughs> yes, uh, I still... <laughs> I want to learn even more from you. The breeze feels nice after the sweat we worked up. We savor our comfortable fatigue as we drink the barley tea Lukiko's mother brought for us. I feel like it's been a long time since you last taught me, Kyoma-san. 
For the past few days, my mind has been under the dread influence of the foul grimoire known as the manual. <laughs> but I've fully recovered, do not worry. Thank goodness, you're back to your old self. He is trying, at the very least. Yukiko answers happily. And then her expression turns serious, as if she's made up her mind about something. Um... Yesterday, you asked me if I had any memories from when I was a guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yukiko looks away. I see her hands fidgeting in her lap. Finally, with trembling up, she speaks. I... Do remember. So that brings up an interesting question. Because apparently that's you're just able to pull memories from the ether. So it isn't you're going on to a different timeline entirely, so much as the original timeline still exists, technically, and this is an alternate like like offshoot of it, but it's not like an an entirely different self contained thing. It's like a alternate version. Like, if one day you woke up and the sky was orange. You didn't get transported into a world where the sky was orange. You're still in the same world. It's just everyone's memories and also the sky have been changed. It's the original world you haven't moved. And this is what I think a similar thing is happening with Okabe here. I think he's still in, like, the original timeline, but the world has been edited somehow in some way. So it's not like a completely alternate reality or a parallel universe or anything. It is literally, there is only one timeline, and then everything is just branched off of that. I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain the difference, but there is one, and I, and I feel and I know it. What? No surprise. I expected she'd remember after what I experienced with Ferris. What? I remember, or actually, um, how should I say it? It's a very transient feeling. Hakonai. Transient. I can't clearly remember it, but at the bottom of my sea of memories, well, in my head, um... Then Luko starts pawing at the air above and to the right of her head. It's above and to the right. Uh, yeah, right over there. You can't see it, but I did it. It feels like it's somewhere around here. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. I don't really get it. <laughs> anyway, you remember? Luko nods. I'm sorry I lied yesterday. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You should be proud to have fooled the great Koya and Koyama. <laughs> ah, that's, that's a sweet looking smile. Look, look, look at that smile. So because I remembered, I know mom's page and number without having to ask. She takes out a piece of paper upon which is written the number. But do you remember when you gave it to Akabe a few hours ago? A.K.A. Nowish. It's going to give you this no matter how things turned out today. And one more thing. One more thing. Yes, don't ever do this a fucking again. Jesus Christ. I don't know if it's related to my memories, but... It's about that old computer. Now that, I didn't expect. The IBM 5100? <sighs> I'll give you a second, yawning. Hmm. Yes, I think so. True, Luka did seem like she knew something about the IBM 5100. Plus, Luka's dad confirmed that it was here at the shrine, at one point. And then one day, it suddenly disappeared. Does Lukiko know where it is now? If that's true, Lukiko, then you might not have to turn back into a guy. But Lukiko faintly shakes her head. I don't think it's that easy. But why not? You're happy, and we can be together. Wow, my throat is very hurt. Very pain throat. Look, go grips my hand. Please come with me, I'll show you. Um, hitting A button. Oh, it just didn't work. I hit it three times. It worked on the third, but not the first two. She looks into my eyes. Look, go is no longer crying. In the fading sunlight, her eyes shine with firm resolve. She brings me to the Daibiru, which, uh, she's still in her Miko garb, but, you know, that's fine. That's very fine indeed. I look up at the huge towering building. I can only see the bottom of it, but you know what? That's fine, too. You know, it's just the way of it. 
The IBM 5100 is here? Um, not that. It is under my hat. You're not wearing a hat. Yeah, I know, my hair is... <coughs> okay, no more jokes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, me. Look your faces away from Dibiru and points. To a coin locker tucked in a narrow alley. It happened last year, just before New Year's. Lukio walks up to the coin locker as she talks. The computer was at our shrine until then. Until New Year's? That's a contradiction. It was only two weeks ago that I found the IBM 5100 at Yanabiyashi Shrine. Which means I really haven't returned to the original world line. It's all my fault. I was helping out to the shrine, sweeping the storehouse when... Uh, excuse me. I broke it by accident. You you broke it? Lukiko not. But I thought Dad would get mad at me if he found out, so... I brought it here and hid it in the coin locker. Ever since, they haven't ever actually checked. I just put in 200 yen every week. It must have been tough bringing it all the way out here. The thing was a ton. I used the push card from home. It broke too. <laughs> yeah, I break everything. <laughs> Even so, it must have been hard to get it here with just a push card. I don't know. I don't think it would be that hard. Maybe she was running on adrenaline. And I heard Kyoma-san was searching for it. I was really surprised. <sighs> I know I should have told you the truth, but I thought you'd hate me for it, and I couldn't say anything. Nonsense. Oh, hang on. Um, backlog. I wouldn't hate you for that, no matter what. You're still my disciple. I know. Look, it takes a locker key out of her pocket. It's already been more than half a year, so the manager probably took it away. Half a year? I guess it's hopeless then. The locker charges 200 yen per day? Oh, yeah, that, I didn't actually do that thing I said. Normally, if a coin locker goes unpaid for more than a few days, the management retrieves the contents. And if the owner doesn't claim it within a month, it's usually thrown away. Meaning the IBM 1500 is already... Yeah, we'll find out. Look, go go to the large locker at the end of the row. Search the key and tries the lock. Uh, it's not locked. Guess that settles it. Sure enough, look, he opens the door to reveal an empty locker. I'm sorry. Either way, it doesn't matter. There's no point in retrieving a broken IBM 5100. You could use the D-mail to say, Hey, Lukiko, don't break the IBM 5100. You're going to. Don't do that. Don't do that, though. And then give it to Okabe. But don't tell her that. It's not your fault. I'm the one who messed with the timeline. Everything that happened is my fault. Kyoma said. That's why I must bear the bird. Where's pain? Suzuha's pain. Ferris's pain. And now, Lukiko's pain. Something occurs to me. What if? What if I send a D-mail telling Lukiko not to sweep the storehouse? That how would that change the world line? Will the IBM 5100 stay at Yanabiyashi Shrine, ready for me to retrieve in August as planned? Part of me wants to try sending that D-mail. If it works, Lukiko could stay a girl. No, I mustn't give in to the temptation. My goal is to restore the world line, not warp it further. Fix the past to save Mayuri. That is my mission. After I save Mayuri, then I will send the D-mail for Lukiko. But until then, um, there's something strange about my memories. Strange how? Inside my mind, there are two memories about that old computer mixed together. The first is a memory of me breaking it. The other has no memory of it at all. The male of me didn't break the computer. He swept the main shrine instead of the storehouse. So Lukio swept the storehouse because she became a girl. Which makes no sense. Why, why would that make the change? She swept the storehouse. She broke the IBM 1500 and deposited it into the coin locker. As a result, the IBM 5100 will never reach me. Is this the butterfly effect? So there's no choice. I have to go back to being a guy. 
はないみたいです。No、oh, no Goodbye!